Hey YouTube, haven't been here in a while. Here's uh, a new video, which will be hopefully the start of a new season. On the bench is a uh, Norman, made in Canada, in for a stainless steel refret, a bone nut and saddle, and an LR Bags um, Studio Pro Element in store. So really looking forward to this one. She's not an old guitar, uh, well not vintage, but well played, and I love to see guitars that are played like this. Just love it, man. Guy plays six nights a week. Deserves a really, really solid playing guitar. So I'll get started pulling frets and dismantling and stuff, and we'll follow this one through to the end. So for starters, I'm just going to remove the nut um, because that's going to have to change anyway. The slots are, are pretty low, and when I come in with new frets, they're going to be higher. So. You know, 99 times out of 100 when you do a refret, you need a new nut. Um, first thing I want to do is just make sure you've you've scored around the edges, or at least check that there's, you know, no lacquer around the edges that can chip and and become nasty when you pop the fret out. This one looks good. I'm actually pretty confident. I'm just going to take a one of my radius blocks, which is a nice solid uh, maple block, and a little hammer here, and I'm just going to go one, two, three, done. Which is so simple uh, and it's nice and clean no issues so that's a winner next up i'm going to uh, just take some sanding pad i use these little 400 grit sponge sanding pads that i find at my china spot it's called uh, dragon mart what's cool is i i, I find that the the soldering iron just gets a bit of contact with the frets when I just quickly scour over the top of them and just clean off a bit of the tarnish. You know, it's a two second thing, but it just makes a difference and I'm done. It means I get a better contact. Okay, so I'm going to start pulling some frets. First job always is to heat them up and uh, roast it. So you, you never want to go too hot, you know. Especially with maple, where you actually end up burning the wood. That looks pretty good to me. Get some pullers. Easy does it. And out she comes. Just like that. So I work my way across the board and uh, clean the sucker up. Do some more. If I hadn't cleaned the tops of the frets with that 400 grit, which is probably like 800 grit by now, the amount of times I've used it, it would just be a little harder to uh, get the solder to, you know, make contact with the, the fret wire because it's clean. It's so easy. These are coming out really easily. Not fighting me much and there's no tear out, which is cool. It's a rosewood board. I actually tend to use two different kinds of solder in my shop. I use my more expensive, thinner stuff for wiring jobs, you know. But I don't spend, I don't use up all of that good stuff for pulling fret wire. I have another roll of thicker stuff that I'm not worried about consuming. Smoke coming off there. So it's usually from the oils and the fingerboard plus you'd see if there was a lot of glue used in installing these in the beginning You'd see a lot of smoke pop up. Hurts the eyes a little bit, so we tend to not want to breathe it in. You gotta be really gentle, slow, easy does it. Out she comes. And then no tear out. There you go. I'll carry on. 
found that the truss rod was feeling a little tight so I'm just taking this truss rod nut out which is huge and I'm just going to dab a bit of Vaseline around the face maybe clean it off a touch and, uh, and put it back in just so that we have a nice smooth truss rod found there's a lot of glue residue around the rod so I'm just also taking the time to clean all that off as you can see with a blade just to make everything smooth you know no obstructions and no friction just fine I'm not getting a great reading on the on the neck just because there's just so much in the way of dirt around here around the fret slots and finger grease and whatnot so I'm just gonna take this fingerboard leveling file I'm just gonna kiss the tops I'm not leveling the board because the board and this is such a short file so I'm just kissing the fingerboard to get rid of all those burrs so that I can dump a straight edge onto this and get a proper reading I do have a neck jig um, which I could be using but I just don't feel it's necessary right now with this particular guitar I will probably use it in the leveling stage it's already a lot better I get my fret wire, my my uh, stainless steel fret wire, should I say. It's all Jesscar, and I get it from Philadelphia. It's already pre-radiused and pre-cut into 25 pieces for me. Um, I will still obviously trim these, some of these before installing, uh, but maybe not because this doesn't have binding, so I'll probably just let them hang out. Um, but these are. 12 inch radius for this 12 inch radius board um, it's closer to a 12 than a 14 I have measured it a couple of times and all over the board and have found that it's closer to a 12 so what I will do because stainless steel fret wire does not conform you know you don't want to have gaps underneath the fingerboard underneath the fret wire sorry so because it doesn't conform because it's so stiff and, and springy it bounces back um, you really need to make sure that your fingerboard is properly radiused for your fret wire it's not like nickel where you know you can get away with it and then in the leveling process you level you know you you, you level your frets you level to your actual radius in the end you know nickel will conform slightly to it all over the show you know if it's compound or if it's a little bit here you know a little bit you know flatter here or a little bit rounder here than here you know nickel is more forgiving in that sense for stainless steel requires a lot more preparation of the board um, so I'm gonna level this now to a 12 inch radius so you can see by the uniformity of the scratch marks across the board I mean obviously there's divots from being played so beautifully all around the board but you can generally see that it's closer to a 12 so I'm just gonna keep going very carefully to be in the straight you know in parallel with the fingerboard I'm not gonna you know tilt the file from either side because that just defeats the object it just removes the whole radius it makes it even rounder by doing that uh, carefully I'm, I'm barely putting any pressure on because I don't want to put pressure on the guitar you know, I made an effort to get it as straight as possible in this position right now um, we'll level in the playing position later when it's, when the frets are in and stuff but yeah it's 
probably actually a good idea to tape off this guitar. I know it's, I know it's in many ways a dirty guitar, but um, doesn't mean you should hurt it further. Just close off the sound hole. bevel fret ends later and, and, and carry on. Now what I will do is actually take some binding tape because it's so thick and chunky and you know protective. I'll actually take a strip of binding tape and actually stick it down over here in this area and in this area just to protect it from a file coming through and yeah. I double up sometimes on the ends just that's because you know you hit the the center twice coming through but you hit the ends once you know you kind of stop there come back you've already gone over it half the time so um, I don't want to get rid of all of these beautiful divots. I mean, for me, this is character in the neck from a player who has played this guitar lovingly and passionately over so many years. It's such a shame to get rid of all of these. So really, I'm just doing the bare minimum that I need to do to get it radiused. So I'm really happy with the, um, the cleanup of the radius on this board now, just giving it a bit of a vacuum. What I do now is just to clean out the fret slots primarily. What I do do is I use this little micro saw, kind of fret slot cleaning saw, and what I do is I just, just lightly go in and just, without cutting, go in and, and gently sort of make sure there's no crystallized glue or anything like that and then I come in after that and just scrape it out the scraper good thing is there's no binding on this job so it's fairly easy to get in and out and cut through binding gonna be a bit more careful yeah you see a little bit of carefully pried up without causing any tear out you don't want little chips of rosewood popping up so you got to keep your eye on things and be delicate be delicate, you know, use common sense. And repeat this all the way through. See, there's a bit more there. I want this to be nice and clean. There we go. I'll carry on. So one thing I've just found in um, preparing this fingerboard is that I found that the, the fingerboard extension over the body has been a bit loose. So I took a little feeler gauge just put it underneath and you can see just how kind of far it goes open. So I'm going to stick a bit of glue in there and clamp it up. And I'm going to recheck the leveling of the board because obviously this might cause a bit more fall away. Which is kind of okay because in the end we create fall away down this area anyway. Kind of a ramp down. I'm exaggerating it obviously. So that's not really a problem. But I do just want that to be secure. We don't want bits creating buzzing or we want a good clear contact. So I'll fix that. Okay. So I'm pretty happy. Um, the fingerboard is ready for fretting. I just need to clean out the edges of the fret slots. I've glued over the um, fingerboard extension. I've glued that down. I've put my tape down. There's the binding tape, the brown tape that I mentioned earlier. See the file, the openings to the fret slots, which I'll tell you about now. That fret is not in, it's just lying there. 
and get started. I'm going to use the Jaws handheld fret amp all the way up until I get to the the neck heel and then I'll use a hammer and hammer the frets in with the Taylor fret back fret back over the um, the body. One of the things we've got to do before installing the frets is just to kind of clean up the just bezel the bevel the edges just a touch on the fret slot. We do this just to help the fret seat nicely because the fret wire is made you can see that it's machined and the you know inside that where am I inside that groove there it might not be a perfect right angle it probably isn't so we just give it a bit of a chance to sit nicely into the fret slot without trying to ride on a 90 degree edge very simply just kiss this corner it also helps just to stop any tearing off the edges it's good practice Just like that. And there we have it. That's with a little, you know, triangular file that I'm using there. Okay, so I've already done a couple. I'll show you now what I'm doing. The fret wire, like I said, is already pre-bent light in there. This is small fret wire so I can just light there. And the larger fret wire I might just tap it in lightly with a hammer first. There goes the uh, jaws with the 12 inch coil in it. And there you have it. Jaws is nice because it's quite consistent you know. You get a good even pressure and if you need it push it in a little more down the one side you can just move it over and it shifts a lot of the pressure to the one side like that um, oh it's great one of the best investments I ever, ever made for fret work so with fingerboards that have got binding what I normally do is put a bead of of uh, hide glue down the fret slot or on the, on the surface of the fret slot before I put the fret in. The reason why I use hide glue and not super glue for the for the down the top is that hide glue just sets slower and so it gives me a longer time to go in and check for you know primary level of frets just to make sure there's no higher ones before I glue in because you know if you if you glue in and then with super glue and you suddenly got a a high fret you got no choice but to either pull that fret properly again, heat it up, take it out you know, put in a new fret, you know, after cleaning the slot again, and it's a big shebang. You know, if you if you have some time to find your find your your primary level first, that's good. That's why I use hide glue for that. But with fingerboards that have got no binding, um, I don't have to put glue in while I'm putting the frets in. What I do is then I you know put them all in and I do a, a primary level check, squeeze in or hammer in any ones that are a little high. And then um, I'll drop a bead of super glue down the edge, sort of hold the guitar on the edge, on the side, and then put a bead of of super glue in. And then you know it, the thin super glue just wicks its way down and gets in underneath the frets, which is quite nice. And then it sets quickly, and I can carry on working. So that's why I'm not using any glue now. But ordinarily I would use a little pipette, kind of like this. That's got some high glue in it, um, and then I would just bead some into the thing on the fret slot and you know Bob's your uncle I'll just carry on putting this fret wire in all the way down and then I'll check back in with you once I start hammering over the body 
this is the Taylor fretbuck I'm putting on here. It's basically a big old clamp. It goes in and then there's a clamp that comes in from underneath. It pushes up against the brace just in front of the fingerboard overhang and then these sides push down obviously. What it does is just makes this this area ultimately rigid. So when you come, you know, with your fretting hammer for instance, and you tap down on it, you're not worried about splitting this or you know damaging the joints, the glue joints and stuff like that. So this is one of the best investments I've made. Weighs a ton. But uh, ultimately necessary. So I'll quickly show you, I mean, the frets go in here the same way. But now I'm going to use a dead bow, a dead blow hammer from Stumac. This side. Okay, so hammering in here. And so on and so forth. Actually, you don't go caveman on the thing. There you go. Later on, we'll come with a one of these guys and just double check. There you go, you see? It's rocking about. So I have to hammer that middle section a bit more. There you go. Okay, so the frets have been in and glued in for uh, a day. I'm gonna trim them all off. There's a lot more effort is going into stainless steel. And they shoot all around the room. Watch your, watch your eyes. I'll trim these all off, and then, uh, then I'll level them after this. You can see how stainless steel just chews up your nippers. Just look at the end there. Just chewed up. And that's why, friends, guitar guys charge more for stainless steel. Well, that and other reasons, obviously. This is why, one of the reasons why I put the binding tape down here is because I want to scratch the surface of the nippers. There you go. That's the one side done. I'll carry on the other side and then I'll pick up from there. Okay, so one of the things that we've got to do next after trimming is just cleaning up the ends. I, I like to clean up the ends first and then level and then do my crowning obviously um, some people like to level slightly before trimming but I don't like to do that because sometimes when you're trimming the wire moves a little bit so at least with with that I can see first what's going on and I'm not leveling twice so I've got my leveling file that you saw when I leveled the board a little bit now just keep that at an angle not I keep it quite steep at this stage just to clean up the ends. Later on I'll come in and bevel. So you gotta listen out for what this it sounds like. There's a feel and a, a sound to when you start to get it to the you know when it's flush with the wood. Plus I run my fingertips on the edge and just feel for that bob so there you go it's a lot smoother so that's it do the 
other side. I'm not putting a lot of pressure on, I'm letting the file do its do its own work. Now you can see why having this thick tape also helps. Now I'm going to do a, it's a quick primary level, I've made sure that the fingerboard is straight. Obviously this is not a true, true, true straightness of the fingerboard. I mean it might move just a touch when strung up and in the playing position. Well obviously it'll move when you string it up and put it to tension. I'm just marking off all the frets nicely with a blue permanent marker. And uh, I'm going to take a 12 inch radius block and um, put some sticky paper down on it. This is why I keep all of my scraper blades after use so I can waste them on chopping sandpaper. It's not good for a brand new blade. It's secure. I'm just going to run it lightly along the top. I will put some pressure down the bottom because I know there's a couple of high frets down here. You know, hammering is inconsistent versus the clamping in, so. What I'm actually going to do is switch this for a, a 14. Because the 14 is a little flatter. And I can control the roll of it. I mean, I can see what's going on. Not an acoustic guitar, I'm not too worried if it flattens just a touch, but it enables me to deal with any flatter fretting. You know, if I've got sections that are popping up on the sides slightly, if I've hammered them down low in the center, it means I'm not going to take off that much material. And the aim here is not to take off much material because that means less work when you filing them around again. What I might do is just this. All the forward stuff here. For any low spots. See, this is so consistent up here. Yeah, it's not too bad down here, too. I mean, no one's going to really play here. Yeah. I'm pretty happy with that. That's good. I'm going to go ahead. And start crowning. So I use two two files. I use a, a 150 grit diamond file here, and I use a 300 grit here. And this one's this 300 grit's worn a little bit. I know that on the one side I've actually got diamond grit that's worn away from stainless steel. So I use the one side predominantly. These are both from Stuart McDonald. 
I rely on these heavily. And typically, if I have a fret that's got that's very flat, I'll start with this file, and I'll before I get to the finish finishing stage of of it being rounded over completely, I'll switch over to the 300. Just that I've I've taken away some of the file marks um, because the least file marks you have, the the easier it is to to polish it up again. <laughs> all right, so I finished reshaping the tops of all the frets. It took me a little while. Now I'm going to just bevel the edges of the frets. Now I don't like to go too far. I think it's pointless. I think we, especially these are these are you know medium frets, so they're not going to poke out too much. So I'm just going to give it a light angle, probably about a 30 degree angle. And just carefully go down the board. I'm resting my thumb on the top of the board to steady me at that angle. check out the edge looks pretty good to me now what I have is a little piece of maple it's nice and flat and what I've done is I've put a piece of 320 grit stick it on the but this side and a piece of 800 grit stick it on this side and obviously they're nice and worn so this is obviously no longer a fresh 320 and that's no longer fresh 800 but what I do is I just use this next just to get rid of file marks and chatter uh, make them nice and smooth what I don't do is put the the paper right to the edge I have that until sort of a millimeter and I can just run it sliding against the tape it doesn't cut in and it just starts a real nice edge you know, when I flip it around to the 800 side, it's a mirror finish. It's real pretty. Okay, so next thing to do is to dress the ends. We're using this Stuart McDonald fret dressing file, which has a safe end. You can see the safe end on your side there. It's completely smooth. And then there's also a that in there. Basically the sides, that side and that side have got um, you know, file surface. So really we're just going to go and round off the sides. Coming from both sides just to hit that angle, that edge of the fret, you know. Take off the sharpness, create a nice little triangle. So I'm not too worried about the scarring on the rosewood because I'm going to sand that anyway. You can obviously clean up these faces and polishing and edges. Sit and repeat. So I'm going to demonstrate on these three frets just what I do to polish up. 
So I use what was a 400 grit sanding pad. Then I have a you know a bunch of foam backed 800 grit, uh, which I got from an automotive company. And then I use a thousand grit fret eraser. <laughs> and then I use quadruple zero steel wool. Um, and because I, in any case, use a blade across the the fingerboard to clean up and that kind of thing towards the end, and part of the oiling and final polishing process, um, the fingerboard will be cleaned up. I'm not too worried about um, just sanding on the board now. It's just part of the cleaning process anyway. So I'll show you. So I'll first start with this. I kind of go diagonally in two ways and then straight. And then I'll switch to the 800, which already you'll see will show quite a shine. Then I'll switch to the fret eraser. steel wool. There you go. So, let's see if I can show you that in better in detail. Take this off. That there is quite a shiny fret. <laughs> okay, so after the steel wool and all of that polishing we're left with this, and uh, like I said, I'm not worried about the scrub marks on the board. It will come out. Pretty happy. It's trying to get close to the. Uh, show you the, the fret ends. There you go. Just a very light bevel on the end. Nice and tidy. <laughs> 